the Houston Jane Doe 2022, identified as Miranda Rodriguez. Miranda Rodriguez was just 24 when she disappeared right before Hurricane Harvey was due to arrive in August of 2017. Her disappearance was from her home in Houston, Texas. Miranda had made plans to go stay with her parents and to wait out the hurricane with them at their home. The plan she had made was to meet her father at an agreed-upon spot. However, Amanda never arrived as planned and was never seen again. As a result, Miranda's family had been frantically trying to find her ever since. They did everything they could to try to find some sort of hope to hold on to. And this went on for almost six years. And now, unfortunately, there's no more hope to hold on to. It would take one year after the Jane Doe was found in order to identify her. But by this time, when she was first found, five years had passed. A family lived on Peach Creek Drive in Houston, and they would report that they had cleaned out their barbecue pit, and they were shocked because inside was something they never expected, skeletal remains. This was in July of 2022. By this time, Miranda had been missing for five years. So for understandable reasons, it never occurred to anyone that this could be the missing person, Miranda Rodriguez. And even more confusing is that she didn't know anyone at that address. There is no link to the address at all that could be found. The house itself wasn't even close to her home, although they would note that she had relatives who lived about five minutes away. Without genetic genealogy, Miranda would still be a missing person. And what is so amazing about this is despite being in a barbecue pit, they were still able to get usable DNA from her remains. So right now, they just desperately need someone to come forward with information on this case to give both Miranda and her family the justice that they deserve. If you don't want your name included in any of this, please just give an anonymous tip. Miranda Rodriguez was a missing person for six years and an unidentified Jane Doe for one. Had she lived the life she deserved, Miranda would be 30 years old today. The Berrien County John Doe, identified as Jeremiah Gerritsen. Some of these stories get to you a little bit more, or at least they do me, than some others, and this is one of those. It started when a 911 call came in on March 4th, 2019. Remains had been found on Ed Lindsay Road in Lenox, Georgia. The remains were found inside of a pond, and it was determined that he'd passed from accidental drowning. They were able to obtain fingerprints, but no matches were found. Thankfully, in newer doe cases, they move a little bit faster, and it was the GBI and Othram Labs that began testing. They had been moving wider and wider with missing person reports, but nothing matched. They also enlisted my favorite forensic artist, Kelly Lawson, to recreate what he may have looked like. But with this, they had a dead end. The man who was found had on many layers of clothing, which is common if someone is without a home to store their belongings in. They often just wear multiple layers. He was wearing Georgia Tech pajama pants, camel pattern pants, a brown and black belt with a yellow metal buckle, a green jacket, a white, red, and blue Bulls sleeveless jersey, green sweatshirt, and that had a white logo on it. He had on mismatched socks, gray pajama shorts, gray boxer briefs, a gray short sleeve t-shirt, and a camo-designed head neck gaiter. Perhaps even more sad and definitely more humanizing is his jewelry. He had on a yellow metal angel pin and a green and tan Soldier of God plastic bracelet. The prince would eventually come back to a 36-year-old man named Jeremiah Gerritsen. From what I can tell, Jeremiah wasn't reported missing, but this is one that makes me wish I had a bigger picture. I believe I found his Facebook, but it doesn't have any photos of the person it belongs to, and the post hadn't been active since 2012. What's sad is he was from Nashville, Georgia, which is only 14 miles away from Lenox. We know he graduated in 2014 from the Wiregrass Georgia Technical College, and this is of course in the same general area too. So something must have happened between the photos that we have here and whatever changed in his life after he graduated from college. From the recreation, it's clear his hair had receded, so likely a bit of time had passed. And here's why this one bothers me. It looks pretty likely that he was homeless, so maybe he wasn't around for photos, and maybe the ones provided came from a college roommate. 
it doesn't really say, but it's entirely possible he doesn't have family. And I definitely, I want to be clear, I am not accusing anyone in his family of doing anything wrong or not reporting him missing. When people are homeless, often they sort of go in and out of people's lives and they don't get reported because they're really technically already missing in a lot of ways. But always the lack of pictures in between make me sad and make me wonder what happened and whether or not there was a mental health issue or what it was. But just when it comes to this, he was clearly a smart guy. He graduated from a technical college and he likely should have been able to get a well-paying job. Something had to have happened. I did find a GoFundMe that is linked below that belonged to his children's ex, as well as her Facebook. They were hoping to raise money in order to have a service for him. It turns out that Jeremiah had two kids. His identity was actually confirmed by matching him with his oldest child. These kids thankfully do have a stepfather in their life, but they love their father and they didn't know what happened to him. His ex, for her part, wanted it known that they love and forgave their dad for whatever was going on in his life at the time. In the end, maybe that's what matters the most. A perhaps telling post is the one that I'm showing here. For privacy reasons, I'm not going to disclose her name or where. She went on to say that Jeremiah was one of her best friends, but that he was overwhelmed and his mind was rattled, suggesting that she'd seen him recently, saying that when she saw him, he had given her a pin that was gold in color and it was a crown of thorns. She would describe him as having a clearer mind. So from this, the takeaway is probably that he did have some mental health struggles. But he loved his boys and he was trying to do the best he could. Jeremiah Gerritsen went unidentified for four years. Had he lived, he would be 40 years old today. If you are at all interested in helping crowdfund John and Jane Doe cases, I've provided links to the DNA Doe Project and DNA Solves below. Both of those allow you to pick the cases you help fund. The Pima County Jane Doe, also known as the Tucson Jane Doe, 1999, identified as Maria Valdez Ronis. There's not a lot available on this case, but the person who did this to her is still out there. So for that reason, I really wanted to cover it. A woman was found on May of 1999 behind a store dumpster, although it's not clear what store that even was. We do know this was in Tucson, Arizona. Even her COD isn't listed in this case. It does say that foul play isn't suspected, and no one's even been questioned in this case. Now, I could be really off base, but something really bothers me in this statement and doesn't seem right. Let me know what you guys think. We know now that she wasn't here legally, that she had gone missing from Sonora, Mexico, which is basically very close to Tucson, on the other side of the border. But it's not every day that a 26-year-old female passes away naturally, either did so behind a dumpster, or someone drug her behind the dumpster, because why? It doesn't make any sense to me. I know I should probably reserve judgment without more information. Someone could drag someone who died of natural causes behind a dumpster, but I don't know. It just, it seems very odd. Maria's case was solved by Moxie Forensics, who I think solved about four or five in this group that I'm recording here now. That's quite a bit all of a sudden. The more places doing the identifications, the better. If anyone has any information, please call the number on the screen. Maria went unidentified for 24 years. Had she lived, she would be 50 years old today. Huge thanks for watching all the way to the end, and a big thanks to all of you who consistently like and comment on the videos. Whether you leave a full comment or an emoji, it makes a huge difference. The whole dance with YouTube is hard sometimes. I gain only about 350 subs a month. So if you consistently watch my videos, maybe take a moment to subscribe. It's a huge push toward the videos being suggested to new people. The next goal is 20,000. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care of yourselves and each other.